So I used to own a Mac Pro. I loved it very much. I used it for a lot of stuff. And it was very useful to me. But one day it lost a battle to a bottle of tequila. And it happened a week before the new MacBook Pros were announced by Apple. After seeing the announcement and everything, I wasn't sure whether I should order the MacBook Pro or get something else. I'm Sony Photographer and I'm gonna tell you what I got instead. super useful to me. I used it for a lot of things. I made it my main machine. When I moved out of my parents' house, I was just using it for everything pretty much. But one day I was using the MacBook Pro to DJ at a party with my little brother. And an accident happened and a bottle of tequila fell on the keyboard. The thing is, I wasn't there in the room while this happened and it was pretty much the end of the party, so I had to head out. So when I came back, the laptop was already closed. I thought, you know, the music is done, the party's over. Since my brother was DJing, he kind of took care of some of the stuff, but no one told me anything about what happened. So like three days after the actual incident, I wanted to edit the photos from the event to look at them. So I fired up my MacBook Pro, turned it on, and nothing happened. Like it was, would not turn on. At that time, I realized it was already too late to save the laptop. I either would have to pay up 700 to 1000 dollars to replace the logic board of the Mac Pro or get another machine. Getting another machine was a really tough decision to make because uh, I have a bunch of use cases for my laptop. I use it for DJing, producing music, video editing, web browsing. And I also have a gaming computer, a desktop that I built, which is at my parents' house. But when I moved out, my brother asked me to leave it for him. So I left that computer there. I could do a lot of the stuff that I need on that gaming machine, but I have to travel all the way to my parents' house. When I get there, I have to be on the computer and not spend time with them. For a while, I used to do my video editing on the desktop machine because it's a gaming computer, so the Premiere Pro runs really nice on it. 4K editing, 4K exporting is relatively fast. So like I mentioned earlier that Apple announced the new MacBook Pros, and this was like a day after I found out about the water damage. I'm like, oh, what a coincidence. Maybe I could get the, the new MacBook Pro. So I bought mine for about $2,000. That's when I just graduated from college and I had my first full-time job. I work as a software engineer, so a MacBook is a really good computer for programming and web development. Back then I used to have a Lenovo Windows laptop, but Lenovo put some restrictions on the BIOS level where it was very difficult to put Linux on it. And it also had dedicated SLI graphics cards and that had poor support with the drivers that were out back then. So I wanted to get a really robust machine that I could use for a long time and that I could do a lot of the tasks very easily and MacBook Pro just did that. So I've used it for about two and a half years, but I came to a really sad realization when I saw the specs and the prices on the MacBook Pro. I was extremely disappointed at what Apple put out because now the computer that I would get would be my main machine. I would use it for gaming, video editing, photo editing, making music, programming when I work from home, and just everyday web browsing. My previous MacBook Pro had the, the i7 quad core CPU, a 16 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD. And it had just an Intel HD graphics card. I didn't have a dedicated graphics card. So as I started researching computers, I saw there were a lot of Windows laptops that started shipping with GTX 10 series Pascal GPU. And once I started looking at the specs, the RAM, the CPU, the SSDs, and also the size and the weight, it really was difficult to justify a MacBook Pro. Because for the price that I would be paying for a MacBook Pro, I could build a 4K 60 FPS gaming machine with 4K monitors and probably still come cheaper than a fully loaded MacBook Pro. I understand a MacBook Pro is portable, you can take it anywhere and it will do a really good job, but currently I cannot justify spending that much. So my budget was no more than $2,000. But since I also wanted the portability, that's why I had to stick to the laptops. I already did like a, a build online, uh, put all my parts together and it was close to like $2,000 with a monitor and keyboard and mouse, everything. But again, I still need to be able to carry my laptop just in case I work from somewhere where I don't have my own machine. Just in case I work from home or I work from my parents' house or if I'm traveling, 
if I have a conference to go to, having a laptop with you is very important. And since my use case is very broad, uh, my requirements were very specific. Since I also do software engineering, I do programming, web development, I need a machine where I can put Linux on. Although the adoption of PowerShell in Windows is very nice, I could do some programming with Windows, but the support is currently not complete. Uh, it's much easier to just use Linux or Mac OS for the type of development that I do. But maybe in the future, that will change. I have an open mind. If Windows 10 becomes fully supported, I'll be happy to use it as my you know, main development OS. So since I needed to load Linux on the computer, I need like, probably like a secondary drive. So a lot of laptops offer secondary drives, either like they'll have one M.2 SSD and then the second one is also another M.2 SSD, or they will do one M.2 SSD and the second one will be just a regular hard drive, a spinning disk hard drive. And a lot of them allow you to just, you know, open the laptop and take out the spinning disk drive and you can put an SSD. And that was my plan to buy maybe like a one terabyte SSD and, you know, put Ubuntu on like, I don't know, 256 gigs of it and just use that just for dual booting purposes and work off that. And the rest would be, I could use it for my video editing files. So when I'm processing, when I'm rendering videos and editing, it's much easier and much faster to do it on the SSD that's on the computer than doing it from an external hard drive. At my desktop machine, that's how I edit videos. I have my external hard drive connected and I edit off that. And the external hard drive is also like a spinning disk drive. So even though the computer is really fast, the IO isn't as fast on the, the hard drive, external hard drive. So after looking and watching a bunch of videos, I had three choices. Razer Blade, the late 2016 version, the new Alienware 13, I think, and the MSI GS63 VR. So all of them had an, you know, a quad core i7, a 16 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 10 series graphics card specifically GTX 1060. I watched so many videos about these laptops, like endlessly. My wife was tired of me watching videos. That's all I could think about because I really needed a machine. So I ended up settling for the MSI G63 VR. I bought the Amazon exclusive SKU. So this does not come with a secondary hard drive. So that slot is completely empty. By default, it comes with a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive and it's like Pretty much worthless. I've seen few reviews about people complaining about performance of the game. The cause of that was that they installed those games on that 5400 RPM hard disk and it's extremely slow. So I didn't even bother getting that one. So I got the Amazon exclusive. I can just buy my own SSD and just install it and start using it. The only problem with the Amazon exclusive version is that they don't include the SATA cable to connect an additional hard drive. So if you buy the model without the hard drive, the Amazon exclusive one, you have no way of installing an SSD or a hard drive. So you have to contact MSI and request and order the part to connect the hard drive to your motherboard. So mine is on the way. And I'm gonna make a video on how to install an SSD on this computer, but I don't know when it's gonna get here. They're probably ordering it from their factory and then once it gets to their California center, they're gonna ship it by UPS to me. So during Black Friday, I managed to buy a Samsung Evo one terabyte SSD. It's gonna get here on Monday. But again, until I have that cable, uh, I can't really plug in my SSD to this computer. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm also extremely pleased with the number of ports on this machine. I'm very surprised that they managed to put so many. On the right, it has the power plug, a display port, an HDMI 2.0, a Thunderbolt 3 port, and a regular USB 2.0. This is on the right side, and the power button is here. I'm really excited about the USB Type-C. I have the Google Pixel, and before that, I had the Nexus 6P. So I already have a few Type-C cables, so it's really exciting exciting to see that this computer comes with it. And with Thunderbolt 3, the, it really increases the capabilities of this computer. On the left side of the computer, I have a Kensington lock, an ethernet port, a full SD card reader, three USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and a microphone jack. This is amazing. I'm really happy that they included the USB 3 port. So I don't have to buy like an adapter. A lot of the competitors, they had a lot less ports. So you had to you know, use the USB type C Thunderbolt ports to connect more media. I have multiple external external drive, one for my photos and one for my videos and sometimes I have to use them both. Or when I go to DJ at a gig, I use the Pioneer's record box software to organize my music. So I need one USB 3.0 for my hard drive where I have my music and I need two more 
USB 3.0s for the USB sticks that I use to DJ with. And having all USB 3 is amazing because all my USBs are also USB 3 and the transfer speeds are really fast. So far, I'm pretty happy with this laptop. I'm gonna make a first impressions video detailing my use cases. I'll also talk about how this laptop performs in video editing environments. I used to use iMovie in MacBook Pro to edit videos. It can handle 1080p without a problem. But once you start throwing 4K videos at it, software really starts lagging and the, the laptop is really hot from all the processing. But the G63 VR has no problem with 4K videos. I used Premiere Pro and I had very minimal lag, like I had no problems. I'm gonna make a video of the test and show you how it plays a full 4K video inside Premiere Pro without reducing the playback quality. So there has been a lot of discussion about the new MacBook Pro and how it's not really for pros anymore. And I've kind of agreed. You know, maybe it could work for some pros. Let's say if you're a video editor and you use Premiere Pro and you use Final Cut Pro, that software is very optimized for the Mac OS and the MacBook Pro. So you will actually get really good performance editing 4k videos but if you're a premiere pro user having like a dedicated gpu is very important so the the dedicated gpu in the macbook pro is like a 2 gig vram amd radeon gpu the gpu that comes in the gs63 vr is a gtx 1060 with a 6 gigs of vram so it's a huge step up from what apple provides in the macbook so if you're a video editor but you actually use final cut pro there's really no reason for you to go to a, a Windows machine. The MacBook Pro will actually be a better performer from previous years. But I haven't used Final Cut Pro on a lot of the devices that I use is Windows. And it's funny how you can get a, a Windows laptop under $2,000 with a pretty good build quality that outperforms like a $3,000 MacBook Pro. And honestly, Windows 10 has come pretty far. I've been using it ever since it got announced. The experience have become pretty refined. Granted, on the GS63 VR, I had to do a fresh install of Windows 10. The Windows 10 that came out of the box had a lot of bloat. So that's the problem with the Windows laptop. With Macs and MacBook Pros, you get really good out of the box experience. You just open it, just install some of the software that you need to use and it's just ready to chug along. With Windows laptops, some of them, they will be the same, but the MSI included a lot of bloat and I had some issues. So I did a fresh install of Windows 10 and I have no problems so far. The computer, very performant. So it can handle any task I throw at it really nicely. So this is what I would suggest. If you need a powerful, versatile, and best value laptop, I would say go for a Windows laptop or like one of the ones that I mentioned, the Razer Blade, uh, the Alienware, or GS63 VR. But if you want easy out of the box experience, very good support, and you depend on software that is Mac only, I would suggest the MacBook Pro. Yeah, you're not gonna go wrong with any of those choices. The MacBook Pro is still very nice. I'm a big fan of USB Type-C ports. Uh, it comes with four Thunderbolt 3. I wouldn't be too bothered by it, but again, for me, uh, the cost was a big deal breaker. So my needs are not same as your needs, and you could have a lot more specific or a lot more simpler requirements for my computer. So I would highly suggest do your own research, and I wish you good luck if you're in the market like me. If you have any questions, please let me know below. I'll be happy to answer or any questions you guys have. I spent a lot of time on it and if I can save your time, I'll be really happy. So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.